Well, this was a surprise for sure. Amazon dropped a new World of Halo Banished Checkpoint set. So this is a brand new set to us. It comes with a new Spartan CQB and then the Brute Warrior, which we previously have from the UNSC Armory set. So I believe this randomly went live on Wednesday, August 24th. It could have been Thursday, one of those two days. But the price is $29.99. I'll have the link in the description below if you want to purchase this. Something I want to point out to the back of the packaging, all these figures that are featured are from Series 4. And as you know, we're in Series 6 right now, so I have a feeling that this was produced, never went live on Amazon, and no allocations were released until just recently. You know, especially since Series 6 has stopped the base plates, and we have the base plates included here, which is crazy to me because this could have been one of those sets produced and then never released, kind of like the Jackal Freebooter and Marine. But, you know, we have it now, and I'm really excited to crack this open. I'm going to show you the barcode. I mean, it's not going to really make a difference since these don't really hit Walmarts or Targets, but, you know, just for the sake of having it, here's the barcode, and if it happens to hit any retail stores, then, you know, you can use it. Oh my gosh, look at all that stuff. Okay, this is insane. I took everything out of the packaging. There's no way it was going to fit on my little turntable. But we have 27 individual pieces in this checkpoint for only $30. This set comes with the gravity hammer, shock rifle, the ravenger, an energy sword, commando rifle, pulse carbine, and a needler. Two roadblock barricades, 10 base plates, two fusion coils, the scrap cannon, banished weapons rack, and of course, our two figures. These right here stand at a $20 value, which means the remaining 10 is included with all these accessories, which for in the world we're living in right now is an amazing value. So I'd like to start with the weapons cache or the weapons locker. So there's two pieces, you can just connect them. They slide right together. And with what we've seen with our UNSC weapons locker, there are individual pinholes so you can place all the weapons throughout this weapons cache. So this looks freaking awesome. So you can place any weapon on there as long as it has a pin uh, to be placed in the pinhole. The only one that you're gonna have issues with in this set is gonna be the Ravenger, and that's just because it's a bigger, bulkier weapon. And then all the rest of the weapons that don't have a pinhole, I just decided to place next to it. And here's just a quick 360 of what this entire rack looks like. There's a lot of value within this just alone. I feel like if we had just the two figures, the weapons rack and just the weapon, I mean, I think that's worth the $30 price point as it is. Here are the two barricades that come with this set. So I reviewed these very briefly on my UNSC Armory set. Uh, there's no articulation to them. They're just an awesome world building piece, you know, to really fill the gaps within your scene. And we have our fusion coils, which have already been released within our UNSC checkpoint and UNSC armory set. So this is the gravity hammer that comes in this set. And I wanted to do a quick comparison of a previous one. So you can see the differences between the two. They're going to be the same size and scale. Uh, but the one on the right is like a more blued steel, like black blue with darker wash and weathering. And the one on the left is just definitely a lot lighter. Uh, I mean, I like them both. I would say I like the blued steel one a little bit more. And then the one on the left is definitely a lot heavier. It just seems more solid at the head of the hammer, whereas this one is maybe more, a little bit lighter and hollow. Uh, it doesn't make a difference, just something that I noticed, and you won't really be able to tell until you have them both in hand. And that just leaves us with the scrap cannon. There's two pieces, connect them, and it's basically on a swivel and you can spin it all the way around. The sculpt to this weapon is fantastic. The only thing I think it's missing is just some paint applications and definitely a good weathering job. But if you apply a black wash to this, I think it'll look really good. And this is really cool because once you combine the two pieces, you can have the Brute operating the turret, and it just looks really awesome, very intimidating looking. Spartan CQB is the latest one to our collection and the only Spartan so far to be rocking that orange paint color. And I guess that's just in time for Halloween. I am really digging this orange color to this Spartan. You can see there isn't a whole lot of weathering to this, but it's okay, we can just apply some later. There is a pinhole to place a weapon in the back. This is the first Spartan of its kind to be rocking this style of chest rig. We have the pouches in the front. There's also a knife at the front right shoulder, which doesn't come out, it stays in place. I do like the forearms to this figure. I think they look really good with that black and gray. You can see there isn't a big bulky shoulder piece, so you know we're going to get a good range of motion from the shoulders. And the legs are pretty standard from what we've seen with our previous Spartans. At this point, I think y'all should know how the articulation is going to go, but we're going to do it anyway. Shoulders can go up about this high, and then it is on a hinge and swivel, so we can spin that, as well as the forearm. And we have a good break here at the bicep, and it is uh, not that 
that great. It is under 90. Um, but, you know, I've seen people cut on the inside of this forearm to give it a greater range of motion. So that can be fixed. The wrists are going to have the same type of articulation and we can spin them around. Torso has the ball joint. We can spin this all the way around. Unfortunately, my torso is a little loose to my figure, but I can spray some clear coat to strengthen that up. Hips have that ball joint, and then we can rotate them inwards and outwards. We have the double breaks here at the knees like we've already seen. Again, this should be no surprise to us. And then here at the foot, we have a hinge and swivel with some flexion. Next is the Brute Warrior. Now I have already reviewed this figure in an earlier video when I did my collection room tour and all that. So we'll do it again very briefly for those of y'all that have not seen it. One of the issues people had with this figure is that the joints were super tight and stuck. So they ended up snapping the feet off the figure. And uh, this doesn't seem to be the case with this batch of figures, or at least that I have anyways. The joints seem fine and, you know, it doesn't seem like they're going to snap off. In any case, if that does happen to you, just run it under some hot water or a blow dryer for a few minutes and the joints will loosen up and you won't be at risk for snapping them. Taking a close-up of this boy, I do like the sculpt. They did a great job as far as like the little leather straps and then the paint applications and just a little details throughout and this little ugly <laughs> head i do think his head looks super small you know compared to the rest of his body but you know i think maybe they did that because the helmet might make it look too bulky but either way his head does look tiny kind of like from beetlejuice when uh, he shrinks his head and the back of the figure does have a pinhole so you can place a weapon back there the articulation is great to this figure you know there's no big bulky armor pieces so we can raise the shoulders up pretty high swivel and hinge at the shoulders and then the same thing here at the bicep this is one of the more better constructed brutes that we have it's definitely my favorite i just feel sturdier and just really well constructed and i don't have any loose joints on this figure at all Bicep is a little under 90 degrees. We have the hinge and swivel at the wrist. Torso is on a ball joint, but we can only go from side to side. We have our ball joints at the hips, so we can rotate them inwards and outwards. Again, we have our double breaks at the knees. This is my favorite part of the figure just because there's a lot of range of motion with that. And then at the ankles, you can hear the clicking. These are great, and then we can spin those. I think we can spin them all the way around. You just have to kind of maneuver it around. Yep, just like so. And then the neck is on a hinge. We can flex it forward and then we can spin the head all the way around. Okay, my final thoughts on this set. Price point $29.99 and you're getting a whole lot of stuff for $29.99 and one new figure. So there's a few things to take into account. This does seem like it was supposed to be released when Series 4 came out based on the illustrations that are at the back of the packaging, which explains why we still have base plates in this set since Series 6 has no base plates except for the Skirmisher. Now, if this set was released alongside Series 6, I would say we don't need these base plates any longer, but since it was supposed to be released back then, then it makes sense why they're in the set. Moving forward, I think if they were supposed to release any new sets like this, we should take out a few of those extra items like the base plates and maybe a few extra weapons and really focus the attention on the figures itself, making sure each and every single joint is stiff and tight and then maybe some extra paint applications as far as weathering goes throughout the body. With that being said, we're already in Series 6 and there are noticeable differences in quality compared from Series 6 to our previous waves. So I'd like to see them continue to invest in the figures, making them the best they absolutely possibly can be. And if that means taking out all the base plates from future packs like this and weapons, to improve the quality of the figures, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm even okay paying one or two extra dollars for one single World of Halo figure if that means it's the best it absolutely possibly can be. But that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. I posted this on my story the second it went live as well as the ODST drop pod. So make sure you follow me so you don't miss out on any new things that drop. I'm also going to be doing toy photography and other toy videos. Be sure to like and subscribe. It is free and I will see y'all in the next video.